Amen, amen. So today is a bit of a different one. I'm going to take us right to a scripture, and you've probably seen this one before because we've been talking about it a lot. This is John 17, 23, when Jesus prayed for unity. We first brought this up last fall. Because we were doing a series, I'm going to read it to you in just a second. We were doing a series on, um, you asked for it, it was you guys gave us your questions and then we would preach answers back. And one of your questions was, um, Pastor, why are there so many denominations in the church? Why is there so much division? And before we told you the history of it, we took you to this passage where Jesus prayed for unity in his church, not for division. Amen? Amen. And then we got to the end of it and And I shared with you guys that we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 40,000 Christian denominations today. And that really stirred a sadness in many of you. That was last fall. So let let me read this to you phrase for phrase so we get it. Jesus says, and this is his high priestly prayer. This is what he prayed right before he went to the cross. He said, I in them and you, Father, are in me. May they experience such perfect unity. Say perfect unity perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Jesus prayed for unity. This is massive and the whole rest of the message is going to be built on this idea. Jesus prayed for unity. Did you know that sometimes God doesn't get what he wants? And that messes with our theology a bit. It says in the scripture that God longs that none should perish. Did you know that sometimes people will choose an eternity separated from God, even though God doesn't want that for anybody? Even though God longs for every single person to get saved, God gives us choice, amen? And this is another one of those moments where he says, he declares, Jesus prays himself, prays that we would be one. I want him to get what he wants. I want to work harder. Can you say amen to that? I want to work harder that Jesus would get what he prayed for 2,000 years ago, that they would be one in such perfect unity and that the world would know. So we preached that last fall. The next section of this message, I've got to tell you a story because you got to know what God has done in the last several months, and it's a bit of a story, so bear with me on this. So that was last fall. Then in January, we started this Acts series And one of the messages that we did was on unity. And I read you this verse again. Do you remember? Because when the early church came together and God came near and the Holy Spirit was poured out, there were miracles and there was love and there was sharing and there was all this stuff, but there was also unity. It says that they were of one accord, they were of one heart, and they were of one mind. And we looked at that and we saw the miracle that it was at the very beginning of the church. And we talked about that in January. And we talked about Jesus's prayer again. And we experienced just a little bit of that grieving and sadness that we aren't there yet. And I'll be honest with you. Even when we were preaching about unity in in January, I was really focused on the unity within this church, this one Grace Fellowship Church. But then I think God maybe had some other plans. So at the time, we were planning for Easter. Crazy, right, to be planning Easter in January, but that's what we do. And we had painted all these windows last year. Some of you guys might remember that. And it was just, it wasn't as effective, and we decided to stop doing windows, and we we were going to hire a billboard. And we were going to put this phrase, his name is Jesus, on this billboard, which we still are. And the billboard is not only going to declare his name is Jesus, which, what a phrase, yes? Yes to declare to people, but it's going to be on this billboard, but it's also going to send them to a website. And the website's supposed to help people get connected to church on Easter Sunday. And in the midst of the conversation about like, well, what should be on this webpage? Of course, the most natural thing is send them to right to Grace Fellowship. But we've been talking about unity so much. And before I knew it, the words were coming out of our mouths. No, let's have several churches on that website, not just ours. And as soon as the words were said, everybody around the table is shaking their heads. Yes, that's the right thing. That's the right move. So then we got the pastors together and we're like, well, who the heck can we put on that webpage? And we started thinking about, we started talking about, this is the practical stuff. We came up with five churches. Um, And and here's why we, 
if we were going to send visitors to these churches, we had to know that they were preaching the gospel of Jesus. We had to know that it wasn't a work salvation, right? Because salvation is through grace. Yes? Yes. It's not by anything that we do. We had to make sure that that gospel was there. We also started talking about pastors that we knew personally. Because if we're going to send visitors to these other churches, um, we had to know that if they didn't wear the right tie or the right dress, they weren't going to get dirty looks when they showed up for Easter Sunday. We had to know that they were going to roll out the welcome mat of, of, of friendship and kindness to people as they came in the door. So we started thinking about churches that we knew the pastors personally, and we came up with five churches. And so then I had to email those churches and say, well, do you mind if I put your logo on our website? And they all said, yes. They all said, go ahead and put us out there. And then two of them wrote back to me individually and said, um, how do we make this even bigger? And how do we help to make this bigger? And I hadn't planned on that. By the way, this whole thing that I'm about to roll out to you, if I had known where this thing was going to go, if God had told me up front, I probably would have said no. Because it was so much, and it is so much, um, but sometimes being on the crazy freight train that God throws you on is better than not, amen? amen. Not even sometimes, all the time. Anyway, so then I had a coffee with one of the pastors. Um, this is Mike Keybone. He's over at First Baptist Church. And um, we were talking about this. And he said, what if we don't just do a billboard and a website? What if all of our churches preach the same exact Easter sermon on Easter Sunday? He's like, what if, what if we get t-shirts and we put a t-shirt on everybody in all of our churches and we have them all wear them out in the community so that we're all pushing this unity idea amongst people all at the same time? And what if we really blew this thing up? Amen. What if? And I started getting really stressed. <laughs> I like to be in control. I like to plan ahead. I like to know where all the pieces are going to be. Um, this was feeling out of my control. Um, at this same time, we were in our final couple days of the uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Some of you guys were here for, for uh, that with us. And one of our, um, one of our prayer warriors in the church who he gets words from God sometimes, they shared this word with me and they had written it down. And, and the idea was that God was telling them that the enemy, Satan, had affected this community with some kind of a spiritual sickness, which of course is true. And they said, look over the seats and look out into this community. And it was like God was saying, these people have been robbed and pillaged by the enemy. And that captured my heart. Because what does robbed and pillaged mean? Pillaged is a special word. Pillaged means you've been attacked. You've been attacked and your defenses have been knocked down. And you have been stolen from because you are defenseless. That's pillage. And it was a violent idea. But then I started to think about it. And it's like, isn't that, what, isn't that what's really going on here? That apart from Jesus, apart from his protection, apart from his way, apart from his forgiveness, apart from Jesus, we are helpless. Our marriages are helpless. Our relationship with our kids, helpless. Our career, you are helpless. Your finances, helpless. Your sense of truth, you surviving a presidential election year, you are helpless. Are we helpless? Our addictions, we're helpless unless we run to Jesus. And I said this to Mike Keebone while he and I were sitting there talking and he had just read some study, some survey that had been done in the Lawton area. And he's like, you know what that survey said? And this is not counting Fort Sill. It says there's 60,000 people, 60,000 that have no meaningful relationship to a local church in Lawton. 60,000 unchurched, robbed and pillaged. So that matters. So I'm thinking about all this. 
Should we make this bigger? Should we do this crazy thing? And then I come in that weekend to church, and Pastor Tanner decides to preach on boldness. And I was sitting right there, just cursing him, you know? And remember what he was telling us that day? It was, hey, don't pray that God would make things safe. Don't pray that God would make things easy. How about we pray that God would challenge us? How about we pray that God would give us the boldness, give us the wisdom, give us what the things that we need for when the moment comes? And man, God was working on my heart with all of this stuff all at once, all at the same time. And then he gave us this picture. I don't know if you remember this, but he's like, it's like you're walking down a hallway and you're about to go through a doorway and you know that what's on the other side of that doorway, you're not capable to do that thing. You don't have the tools. You don't have the ability. You don't have the power. And and then he told us, he's like, actually, you're right. You don't. But you can pray, God, fill me and be enough with me on the other side of that door. And that's trust. Gosh. And so I had to do this whole thing. Praise God, huh? He set this all up. So I went in that next weekend and told the staff, I'm like, we're going to have to put some crazy plans together. And they just rolled with it, which is amazing. And then we got all these pastors together that very next Thursday at White Buffalo. Here's a picture of that. That's all the pastors together. And we talked about all of this. I told them Mike Keybone's crazy ideas. And they were all instantly in. And before we got there, you're looking at that and you're like, that looks like a little bit more than five pastors. Here's why. So uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman here at church um, who knew um, a Hispanic-speaking um, uh, church um, and invited their pastors to come as well. We're like, absolutely, come on, be part of this. Um, And then I showed up to White Buffalo 20 minutes before our meeting because that's what you're supposed to do at White Buffalo if you want to steal the special conference room Um, because you got to kick people out so you can have your meeting. And so I showed up 20 minutes ahead and I was all ready for this um, and there were two people in there and I walked in to kick them out. But here's the thing, I was wearing this shirt (laughs) that talks about God. And I don't wear shirts like this often with words on them. Um, But somebody at our church actually gifted me this shirt. And so I felt obligated to wear it a few times. Um, And then, you know, you start getting compliments from people. So you're like, all right, I guess I'll wear it. Um, God created so many moments and conversations because of this shirt. Um, so anyway, so I walk into that room, go to kick the two people out, and, and, and the lady, she just starts smiling at me, and she gets all sassy with me, and she's like, well, what are you going to do in here? And she, start, <laughs> she starts interrogating me, essentially. And, and eventually, I admit to her that a bunch of pastors are about to meet about Easter, and she's like, well, we're pastors. She's like, you're going to kick two pastors out so you can have a meeting with pastors? And then she wants to know more, and... And they are brand new in this community. About a year ago, um, they became pastors here. And they're like, can we join in and be part of this? You're going to see them here in just a second. So five churches became eight, by the way, by the end of that meeting. And they're all in. And I want you to meet them real quick. We've got a video um, that we put together with the eight churches. Here it is. (laughs) All right. I got it. 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 Now it just shifted. We're Eric and Alexis Love, and we're from New Testament Christian Church. We are Michael and Courtney Lovett with The Life Community Church. We are Eric and Fabio de Vasconcelos, and we are from Reaching Lives Church. Oi, nós somos Fabio e Erica da Igreja Alcançando Vidas. My name is Mike Keybone, and I'm the pastor at First Baptist Church downtown. I'm Robert Smith, lead pastor at Spring Community Church. I'm David Hubbard, executive pastor at Lawton First Assembly. We are Eli and Sheridan Garcia. And we are the lead pastors at the Church Lawton. Hey, I'm Josh Trueblood, lead pastor at Grace Fellowship Church, and we're all agreed on this. The most important thing is that you reconnect with Jesus this Easter. Isn't that fun? (laughs) 
the, the very first couple, um, Eric, Eric and Alexis Love, they were the two sassy people who were in the room <laughs> when I walked in. <laughs> it was a fun day. There's just been a sense in which God's had his hand on all of this. I said before, if I didn't know what this was going to be, I probably would have said no ahead of time. And, and I mean that, uh, not joking. Um, sometimes I desire to be in control of things. Um, and sometimes God comes and says, I've got to blow your boundaries away. Um, boundaries, by the way, are a healthy thing, yes? It's healthy to have boundaries in your life. One of the things I, I, I like to say, though, is the only person you don't have boundaries with is God. Amen. You, you, you can have boundaries, and ba- boundaries are healthy and they're helpful. But when God comes in and says, do a crazy thing, you get on his train. So you just got to know that he's leading you, and I believe he's been leading us. Um, some donations were made. Do I have that donation slide? <clears throat> I didn't have it for first service. There it is. Excellent. Um, I want you to know this too. We had four businesses came out and helped us do this. Lawton Marketing Group developed a website for all of our Easter visitors to go to. If you go to lawtoneaster.org, they developed this website for us for free. It's amazing. Um, You can actually go to that right now on your phones if you would like to. But they developed it for us for free. Affinity um, came out. They're also a local business. And they donated eight church banners that all say his name is Jesus and the website on them. They donated 1,000 free T-shirts to the eight churches. And we're splitting them up uh, equally across the eight churches. And then 3,000 stickers that Wayne's Drive in the two different locations are actually going to staple to every single outgoing order. And I think it's the weekend before Easter. Isn't that fun? Um, Yeah, they're going to put those stickers on every outgoing bag. And and then UPS actually also came forward um, and they're donating 280 free yard signs to our church. Um, Those are actually out there today. You can pick those up before you leave today. Uh, Not you can pick those up. Please pick those up. Uh, before you leave today, uh, we counted like one per family unit per home. Um, if you've got two homes, please take two. Um, but yeah, take one, please. Uh, they are going to be downstairs at, at the exit as you leave. Grab one of those. And if you parked up here, just drive down and grab one. Um, yeah. So all those donations came in. Do you see how God was like pouring gasoline on this little fire? Yeah. And just overwhelming me with his leading and making it just abundantly clear that he was doing some kind of a crazy thing. Um, One other thing that Mike Keebone said in our meeting that we had uh, really got me. He said, are we going to be, are we going to be unified? Are we going to be unified for real? Because we can do a fun marketing project together and then be done. Or are we going to be unified for real? And so he threw out there, he said, I'm going to take the names of all your churches and I'm going to put them on a banner in my church. And I'm going to ask our people to go and stand in front of that banner as a focal point and pray for the other churches that we're involved with right now and pray for their actual increase and blessing and success and growth. Because that's for real. Has God ever asked you to pray for somebody that you have mixed feelings toward? And did you obey him? Because if he asked you, if you obeyed, if you prayed for that person you have mixed feelings toward, he messed with your mixed feelings, didn't he? Like he actually started to create love between you and them in the prayer because that's part of what he does. What is he going to do to us if we start to pray for these other churches? Maybe it's unity for real then. So if I could just draw your attention to the corner of the room, you'll see there is a banner with the names of the other churches that are involved in this project with us. I would love it if you started making it your habit across the next five weeks to show up for service early, walk over there for five minutes, and one by one, start praying for those churches. Pray that God would protect their pastors. Pray that God would protect their budgets and their buildings. Pray that God would send visitors and seekers to them. Pray that God would give power to their pastor to speak the truth with clarity. Amen? Pray that God would would send seekers and and, and hurting people to them that could get involved in their life groups and start serving on their serving teams. Like, for real, pray for them. 
that'll change us. Amen. I, here's the thing. I think sometimes we talk a good game on unity, but at the end of the day, we really like our church best. Yeah, we do. I know. Um, we had a, oh, this is a hard story to tell. Um, so we had an architect come here a couple years ago because we were looking at future building stuff. And he was doing this big study for us and trying to figure us out. And one of the questions he asked, and, and we had like elders and pastors and leaders kind of gathered in a room, smallish gathering. And, and he asked this question in the midst of this meeting. He said, okay, Grace Fellowship, who's your primary competition? And somebody said the name of another church in town. And when they said it internally, I'm like, yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> and, then, and then this uh, really wonderful man of God in our church said, no, it's Satan. Amen. And I'm like, dang it, you know. <laughs> um, but it's real, right? Like, 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 dive into that for a second. Like, when you find God at a church, at a church you love that church. You connect. It becomes family. You want that church to be healthy. You invest in that church. And you invest in it so much, and you start to believe in that church so much, it truly does become your favorite church. And that's a good process to happen. But you can take this tiny step from this is my favorite church to this is the best church. And that's too far. You know what the best church is? The one that's got Jesus. That's the best church where people are going to find Jesus. That's the best church. And we got to shift our definitions a little bit, and we got to be careful. I think that's part of what God is doing here with this unity project, is he's calling us to understand the truth. People need the Lord. They don't need Josh Trueblood. And they don't need Grace Fellowship. Amen. They need Jesus. I, I, I pray that we are a hub for that to happen. But they need Jesus, and we got to get that clear. So pray for unity, and I ask that across the next five to six weeks, you pray for it for real, okay? The, you know, we're going to do this website, and everybody's going to go to this website, and they're going to they're gonna choose which church they want to go to because it's just going to give them all eight ch churches to choose from, by the way. When they do, they might not choose us. It's okay. As long as they get Jesus. Yes? What if we do this whole crazy thing together over the next five weeks and they all go to First Baptist Church? As long as they get Jesus. Can we mean it for real? We got to mean it for real. So pray unity and do unity. Here's the other stuff that we're going to do. Um, we're going to do a billboard. A billboard is coming. They're waiting for the uh, ground to not be so soggy from the rains. So pray for dryness. You could pray for that. Um, but the, the billboard has already been printed out and they've just got to install it. That's going to be on the corner of 52nd and Quanta Park Parkway. Um, it's back in the field back in there. And the, the banner will, or yeah, the, the billboard will simply say his name is Jesus and then point people to LawtonEaster.org. So if you haven't gone there on your phones already, LawtonEaster.org, you you're going to want to text that to yourself so you don't forget it. Text it to your spouse right now. If that's going to help you to remember, do that. Yard signs, you can pick those up uh, today. Please pick them up today. Um, get one. Get it installed today. People can see that website and go straight to it and get all the info that they need to get. And I want you to know, too, when you go to the uh, website, it's going to say his name is uh, Jesus. It's going to have that video that I just showed you earlier, that, that small video shows us all together and then it's going to have all the churches listed out below they can just click on whatever one they want to go to they're listed in alphabetical order okay next what else we got t-shirts t-shirts um t-shirts are fun right um we're going to do t-shirts so march 17th which i think is in three sundays march 17th is free t-shirt sunday i know this is announcement -y right now but i've got to get you some information okay um, free t-shirt Sunday. Here's the way this is going to work. Um, we're going to give you a free t-shirt and you're going to agree to wear it when we tell you to. 
That, <laughs> that's the contract you're making if you take a shirt. You have, to, you have to agree that you will wear it on those two Fridays, the 22nd and the 29th. The 29th is Good Friday. And so we want kids and adults to be able to wear these. Again, if you're comfortable, mom and dad, you make those decisions for your family. But let's wear them in the schools. Let's wear them at work. We picked Fridays because maybe you got casual Friday and you can wear a t-shirt and get by with that. So wear these things on those two Fridays. Uh, we're going to have adult and kids sizes as well, uh, kindergarten and up. So then we've got the uh, QR code. Nola on that, on the t-shirts. Here it comes. Could you all do this right now? Can I ask you to take out your phone? We're just going to do this bit together, and then i got one more bit that we're going to do together, and then we'll get to the rest of the message. So this is where you're going to say, this is the T-shirt size my family needs. You're not going to put your name on it. You're not paying money. You're not signing up for anything. You're just saying, for me and my family, and you might have to do this multiple times to get your family members in there, just say, this is the T-shirt size I need because I want to have the right sizes for you if I possibly can. Again, kids too, we're going to have youth sizes. If your size is not in there, please just see the folks at our Connect desk after the service today and tell them the size that you need and they will get that for you. I want everybody to have this option. Excellent. I love seeing you guys work. It's so unique for me. It's excellent. Yeah, we could have just taken a guess on sizes but we'd really love to have something a little bit more tuned in to our community here. So yeah, if you come that Sunday, you will get a free t-shirt. If you are not there that Sunday, um, I cannot guarantee anything afterward. We'll see. Okay, next thing. If you could pull out your program, there's an insert in there. Two check boxes in your name down below. We need extra help for Easter Sunday. We do every single Easter, but I think we're especially going to need it this Easter. So we need extra people in the kids' area, and we need extra people in parking, coffee, all first impressions. We need extra people. Because if we're going to have extra people come, it's going to be better if we can serve those extra people. Amen? Yeah. As God brings people, I want to be able to help. And I need you guys to be able to help. Um, so please check one or two of those. If you can, put your information at the bottom. And then at the very end of the service, our ushers are going to be at the back door with baskets to take these inserts filled out from you. And they will not let you escape unless you give this to them. Okay? <laughs> jokes. Just jokes. That part. All right. Drop it in the baskets on, on your way out. Okay. Now let's turn a corner for a second. This whole thing is going to be fun. I mean, there's going to be yard signs and T-shirts and billboards and all these churches. It's going to be a fun time. There's going to be buzz. There's going to be excitement. It's fun to do fun things. Amen? But also, who cares? Who cares? Who cares about a T-shirt? Who cares about a yard sign? Who cares? If we get some more butts and seats on Easter Sunday morning, who cares? I'm just going to let that sit for a second. These things are not good in and of themselves. Face that for just a second. A t-shirt's just a t-shirt, guys. It's what a t-shirt creates that I'm about. A t-shirt creates a moment between you and another person where you can maybe share Jesus or invite them to church, help them on their next step. <laughs> Let's talk about this, right? I don't usually wear stuff like this. I don't know about you, but I like often, uh, say this right. Okay, I did a career in technology for 10 years and I wasn't a pastor. And so I got to know people and my spirituality would sometimes come into the relationship. But most of the time, I could keep it to myself. As soon as I became a pastor, 
Guess what everybody asks you in the first 30 seconds of a conversation with them? What do you do? <sighs> Pastor. Right? And then you see it in their eyes. They're thinking about, have I been cussing this whole time I've been talking to him? <laughs> what have I said? Has it been inappropriate? You know, they're thinking about all that kind of stuff. But once we're past that, we can have a conversation. And the majority of the time, it's not a big deal. But sometimes that person who finds that out and all of a sudden I'm outed in the conversation, they're going through a crisis. Or the Holy Spirit in some other way has brought them to a place of need and they've got questions. And all of a sudden we're talking because that wall's been broken down and now we're being honest about things. When I started to wear this shirt around, it broke things down even faster because, I don't know, you put, the, you put the gear on, you know what I mean? And conversation starts. Some of you sports people know that, right? Conversation start. Does that make you nervous? Conversation start. You put a sign in your yard. Guess what you've just done in your neighborhood? You've outed yourself as a Christian, right? You've changed the dynamic on your street. Next time you're out mowing your lawn and somebody comes drifting up, walking up, asking you questions about stuff, being open-hearted, what's going on at your church? You need to be ready. See, that's what the yard sign is. And that's what the t-shirt at school is. And that's what the t-shirt at work is, is it's gonna break down some walls at your workplace. It's gonna change the dynamic. That's what I'm anxious for. See, Jesus said, may they experience unity, perfect unity. He, but he didn't stop there. He said, so that the world may know. Did you know this unity has a power? God's going to use this power to help people find him. Amen. That's the point. So Jude 1, says, rescue others. And you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. You're called to snatch people from the fire. You're like, well, I can't. Neither can I. We're not capable. Can I get an amen? amen. We're not capable in and of ourselves to change anybody's eternity. But God still calls us to be there. God still calls us to be available and to be a part. It's all him. It's not all us. But we do need to be available. Snatch others from the fire. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the 60,000 people in Lawton, Oklahoma, who were robbed and pillaged. That's who he's talking about. He's saying, you, you got a job here. You got to do your job. Did you know you had a job? Have you forgotten you have a job? We're, see, we're not called to just get saved and then God beams us up to heaven like Star Trek. Wouldn't that have been easier? Like I'm saved now, why not just get to eternity? But he's left us here, why? Because we're meant to reach other people for Jesus. They need our testimony. They need friendship with us. Am I telling you that you're some kind of spiritual salesperson and you got to close deals and get so many notches on your belt? God help us know. No, don't make people projects. Don't make it about ego and pride. Don't do any of that stuff. Just be a person. Be a person who's been saved by Jesus. And then when somebody asks you about it, tell them. And wear a t-shirt, amen? <laughs> wear a t-shirt. 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, my old life is gone. This is one of my favorite passages. I just need you guys to hear this. It says, Jesus died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Right? Like, you got saved so that you would no longer live for you. That's powerful. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. I quote this verse all the time here in front of you. That when you get saved, you give your life to Jesus Christ. You don't earn any of it, but you're like, Jesus, you got to forgive me. God, help. You ever pray that? God, help. That when you do and you ask for his salvation... This incredible process happens inside of you and it's invisible. You don't even know what happened. 
Your old life is gone and your new life has come. If I could x-ray your spiritual DNA, you have transformed into a brand new person. The spirit of Jesus Christ has come to live inside of you. His Holy Spirit is inside of you. You are a new person. That's what that verse says. And then verse 18, keep reading. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling his people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. God, God knows the world is broken with him and he wants it fixed one soul at a time. One life at a time. That's reconciliation. And then verse 20, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So you're an ambassador. Some of you are like, this is way heavier than I planned this morning. But you do, you have a job. You're called to it. What's an ambassador do? Right? Think about it for just a second, because that's the picture he just gave us there. An ambassador loves two countries. If you're an American ambassador to France, let's say, you got to love America and you got to love France so that you can build a bridge. Amen? Otherwise, it won't work. You got to love them both, but you got to love America just a little bit better. Right? Otherwise, it won't work. You're building a bridge and you're representing. We are, every single one of us who is in Christ today, You are a person of two countries, heaven and earth. And you are an ambassador of heaven. You've got to love them both to build a bridge, but you got to love that one just a little bit more. That's what ambassador means. So practically, how are you going to do this? Wear a (laughs) t-shirt. Wear a t-shirt. Put a sign in your yard and be a part of this. Take that website, share it every day. I mean, I'll, whatever. Get this message out. But realize what this is really about. It's about unity and the beauty of that that Jesus wants to do for real. And it's about you being an ambassador to whoever God sends your way. Let him do it. So practically, here's how it's going to work. Being an ambassador is not just wearing a t-shirt. It's being ready to talk. Be ready to talk. And when I say be ready to talk, I don't mean that you've got to know all the Bible answers. Somebody say amen to that. You don't have to argue somebody. You don't have to sell them. None of that. Just be a person. Tell them the truth. I'm I'm struggling. Well, I can tell you what Jesus has done for me. I may not know all the verses, but I can tell you what Jesus has done in my family, in my marriage. I can tell you what he's done. That's enough, guys. That's all you need. Be ready to talk. Next, be gentle and respectful. This is out of 1 Peter 3.15. It says, if anyone asks you about the hope that you have, always be ready to give them an answer, but do so with gentleness and respect. Gentleness and respect. That means you're not yelling at them, amen? That means you're not guilting them. You're not looking down on them. Speak to them with respect. Respect where they're coming from. Share your story. Be available for six weeks. That's the next piece. Be available for six weeks. Why? Because we Christians, most of the time, we're a kind bunch. We're pretty kind to people. We're just busy. And we're so busy, most people don't get a chance to see our kindness because we're walking away from them too fast. Next six weeks, could I just ask you to make a commitment to your God? I'm gonna give you some space where you can come and interrupt my life. And I'm gonna take too long at the grocery store because I'm gonna get stopped. Or I'm gonna be talking to a neighbor and I'm not gonna get everything I told my wife I'd get done today because I'm gonna get slowed down. Be interruptible. Be late to your next appointment. Just for six weeks, just be available. Don't be too busy. Next, be a bit untidy. (laughs) Let perfection go. 
you can't be perfect in that conversation. And some of you, or I'm talking to the performers right now. Some of you are high performers. And one of your little rules are, is that, that you don't say out loud is, I don't enter into a conversation that I can't win. I don't enter into a conversation that I can't excel at and be presentable at. So I just hang back, yes? Take the risk. Be untidy. Let perfectionism go. You won't have all the answers. Be okay with it. Ask God to give you boldness. Ask God to give you wisdom in the moment. Walk through the door. Last thing, be right next to them on Easter. Who knows who God might bring into your life? You might be shocked. By the time we get to Easter Sunday, you might have a neighbor sitting next to you. You might have a, a coworker sitting next to you, classmate. So be right next to them on Easter. Don't say you ought to go to church. Don't say you ought to go to the website. It's one of my least favorite phrases in the English language is you ought to. Seriously. You ever go to a store and you're like, you, you find one of the employees and you're like, I'm looking for this item. And they say, you ought to go to aisle 23. I think it's there. Do you know what that means when they say that? That means you're on your own. That's what they're saying. I'm not gonna walk you there because I'm not very confident and I'm not sure I've got time for you anyway. Too real? It's not you, Ada. It's how about we go together? Our family's gonna be at this service time. I'd love to save you a seat. How about we meet up near the coffee station? I'll show you how to check your kids in. I'll show you the whole thing. And now you're texting and you're, 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 you're exchanging numbers and emails and all this kind of stuff. You're doing it for real. Be next to them. <laughs> See, that's amazing. Because if you're next to them, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna come in with opinions that morning. You're gonna have an opinion about the parking lot guys all of a sudden. You're gonna hope that they got those blue hands waving because you know those are the best Sundays. And you guys better not blow it. And the worship team, you guys better be on top of it. Why? Because I got this person right here. And Pastor Josh, it better be a good sermon. And you better be at your best. Why? Because this person's here with me. Because all of a sudden you care at a whole di different level. That's what we want. Would you guys stand? So much happening today. Get your yard sign. Drop your insert in the basket on your way out. Um, all the things. You got all the things to do. Life groups. We got all that today. But we're going to pray. We're going to pray for unity. And we're going to pray that God would snatch people from the fire. Would you join me in this prayer? Let's pray. Jesus, we pray for eight churches, God, that are unifying this Easter you got eight pastors to agree on something. God, that's a miracle. Jesus, I pray that this unity would go from something fun to something deep. I pray the way it would change all eight of our churches. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing. And God, I pray that that unity would become a power. And that, Lord, you would leverage it, God, to reach out and capture people, Lord, recapture people from this community that need Jesus back in their life. Do a great work amongst us. In Christ's name, amen.